and welcome to another Lacuna Passage devlog video. Uh, this month we actually have been doing a lot of uh, behind the scenes kind of development, the kind of stuff that doesn't show very well in a video or even photos. Um, lots of stuff with saving and loading. Uh, but I did want to show off a few things today in our video here um, that have been uh, improved since the last uh, few times we've shown them off, including our exterior module uh, repairs and replacements. Uh, so before I've shown you the way that you can repair all the components on the inside, or at least how you can replace them, uh, we now have a uh, interface for the repairs. So if you actually see this pump up here is uh, not pumping, so we can click on that. And we want to repair the slot. And so that will fast forward time a little bit uh, to cover the amount of time it took to repair the slot. So now, when you repair a slot, it's actually the connectors that are um, damaged, not the component itself. The component itself, when the slot is 100% damaged, the component becomes broken. So the broken component was removed, but the slot has been repaired. Uh, so now we can replace that component uh, if we have one in our inventory, which we currently do not. But that's okay, because we will see over here that we now have a diagnostic console. So you can see on the outside of the console itself it will tell you that you have 100% power, you have all component slots that are required are functional, and the system is operational. So if we click on this we can actually do a full diagnostic and find out how everything's doing. So you can see these are all the components that are uh, that can be inserted into the water reclaimer exterior module. So we can see our circuit board is at basically 100%. Uh, our fuses are at various levels of uh, disrepair, but they're all, all three that are required are currently functioning. And the one universal hose that is required is at 100%. We've got three working carbon filters, we've got two working storage tanks, and three working solar panels. Uh, the RTG is an alternate power source, uh, alternative to solar panels, but we don't have one installed right now. Uh, but you can see even components that aren't installed, you can see that they are uh, their status as the slot. So even if it's not installed, it can be 99% uh, or um, uh, trying to think of the word for it, it's uh, in the integrity of the slot. So it's uh, it's not broken, it's not anything, so if you insert a component into that slot, it should be fine. Um, so let's just quickly show, since we didn't show a video last time of the improved component slots, so here's the the uh, carbon filters that you can repair or replace, so if we go in here and we remove the component, we've now, see, it's see-through, you can see through to the other one, because the carbon filter is just the insert there. Um, so you can close that, um, actually if we if we want to replace it, I can show you that real quick too. So if we replace the component, then it goes to our inventory uh, and filters only to those carbon filters. So I can select the carbon filter and select install, and there it's back in the slot. Um, so if we close out of that, oh, that is a glitch. Um, okay, yeah, gonna have to fix that. And uh, now over here at the oxygen unit, We've got all the same or similar components anyways. Uh, filters, and it looks like I actually didn't, in this build I don't have any broken components here, so I might not be able to show you guys that today, but let's see here. Uh, do I have any broken, yeah, well, there we go. So there's a, the, one of the broken carbon filters. And if we go over here to the heater, we don't have any broken components here, it doesn't look like. Oh, we've got a couple broken heating elements. So let me show you what that looks like on the diagnostic console. So you can see on the heating elements, uh, there is one circle there that is uh, a dotted circle with 0%. So that's a broken heating element. And I guess I actually miss, didn't look at that accurately. So there's only actually one that's, that's broken, the other one's empty. Uh, so you've got one is good, oh, I should probably turn off my flashlight, uh, two is broken, and three is empty. So that's what that looks like. 
Um, so now I wanted to show you one other thing that we've been working on, which is the um, Documents Manager. So in all of these exterior modules, you'll run into something that you'll be able to do in uh, many different uh, computer systems that you can interact with is you can download uh, documents from them. So in this case you can download a manual. So let's download the uh, oxygen uh, manual, the reoxygenator module operation manual. So this looks kind of uh, intimidating at first, but once you get the basics of how exterior modules um, operate, it won't be so bad. Uh, but we we kind of wanted it to resemble as close as possible, uh, you know, what it might actually be like to have a repair module without it being obviously too lengthy. Um, but it just kind of runs you through the basics of what components are required for each uh, mod or for this particular module, and uh, what um, what the effects would be if they are f uh, if the components fail. Um, so now let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, documents. So as with all aspects of the data pad, you can read this while you're on the move. So that's kind of an important thing for us since there's large empty spaces in the world. Uh, we really want you to be able to do things while you're traversing the environment. So you'll be able to to read up on information while you're traveling from between habitat to habitat. Uh, and when you stop moving, it automatically zooms in because it assumes you want to uh, read a little bit more carefully. And we've just managed our to implement our folder and favoriting system for documents. So if you go to folders, you'll find that you'll, your downloaded documents will be stored in uh, specific folders. So you've got, right now we have manuals and then another test folder and then a favorites folder. And we'll show you that here in a second. So if we go to manuals, we'll see that we have all four of our manual documents already downloaded. Um, so we can open up to any one of those at any time and read about how those modules operate. Now, if we wanted to uh, have this quicker access later on in the game when you have lots of documents, you can favorite it. And when you go to your folders and go to favorites, you'll see that we have three or four different documents here that are favorited that we can now access a little bit faster. And that'll come in handy uh, when you've got a lot of documents. And now this system we've implemented for folders and favorites, we've actually managed to do this for uh, rudimentary uh, folder management for your actual photos. So for photos, you'll see we currently have no photos, so let's go ahead and take some. So I'm just going to take four or five photos here. And now if we open back up to our photos, we will see we've got the ability to scroll through all those. And we can favorite those. And so then we can go to our favorites folder and we'll see we've only got the one photo there now. And if we unfavorite it, we no longer have any favorites. Go back to our folder one. And it will automatically create new folders every 10 photos. and it will limit you to 10 total folders. So you have a limit of 100 photos in game. Now, the nice thing about this is that it prevents you from having too many documents that, uh, too many files generated from the game. Uh, we don't want players to just like spam the photo button and fill up their hard drive. Uh, but that doesn't prevent you from having an unlimited number of stored photos on your computer. Because, as we've mentioned in other devlogs and early on in development, uh, all these photos are actually files on your computer that you can share with your friends and such. So let's take a look at that right now. Um, if That's why I've been running in windowed mode this whole time, so I can show you this. So if we go to our folder here, you can see we've got our five photos that we're viewing on the game. And you'll also notice that even though, uh, and we've mentioned this before, even though we're running the game in a l lower than 1080p resolution, uh, we can actually take, all the photos taken are in full 1080p resolution. Uh, so when you're viewing those, they're going to be the, the best quality possible, even if your system can't handle running the game in full resolution. Um, and as you can see, the file names and dates are all 
and the location even are embedded in the file name. So it's important that you don't modify the file names uh, because, for example, that's how we handle the favorite system. So you'll see now in our uh, in our folder here that we now have this one has got the FAV um, affix on it uh, to designate that as a favorite in game. So it's reading your favorites based literally off of the file names. Um, and they're also copied to this folder for the favorites. Um, so yeah, that is a look at how we're doing some of the document management and uh, file folder management. And actually, you can even, if I create another folder here, so I'll take a bunch more photos quick. And now if we go in here, we've got folder one and three. All right, that's probably a glitch. I'll have to fix that. Should have gone to two. And uh, if we go to three now, uh, we see we've got two photos in there. Uh, if we go back to one, so th this folder is full with 10 photos, but we can actually move those. So if we go to the uh, edit button, we can move that to folder three because folder three has empty space. So now we'll see that folder three has photo number one in it, which was the first photo we took. And we can also delete photos, and that'll delete it off of your hard drive as well. So keep that in mind when you're playing. Uh, if you want to do file management from within the game, that you won't be able to get that photo back. Um, though I suppose it goes to your recycle bin. Um, so yeah, uh, that is the photo system with full file and uh, folder management. And uh, as always, you'll be able to manage those photo photos um, from the saved folder, which as of right now, it goes into the uh, your uh, persistent save path for your user folder on your, your C drive, uh, but we'll probably allow you to change those and make the, the save location wherever you want. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, hope you guys all have a good weekend.